This video is made possible by NordVPN. Start protecting your internet experience today. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash top tens. Use the code top tens to get 70% off a three year plan and an extra month for free. Protect yourself online today and let's get into it. Despite what Disney and Marvel would have us believe with the MCU, there's no magic formula for making box office gold. Everyone who makes a movie fully expects it to succeed and do well, but sometimes that's not on the cards. While there are some movies that are critically maligned and do poorly overall, when a high budget movie fails miserably, the losses can be staggering. In the video today, 10 of them. Number 10. The Adventures of Pluto Nash lost $96 million. If you don't recall Eddie Murphy's The Adventures of Pluto Nash, you're in good company. The 2002 film cost over $100 million to make and was a massive science fiction comedy extravaganza. Or at least that's how they described it since barely anyone actually went to see it. It grossed a paltry $7 million at the box office. The movie is so bad that even its star Eddie Murphy claims trying to watch it causes him to weep openly. It's one thing for critics to savage a movie and Pluto Nash has a dis small 4% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it's quite another when even the star admits that the whole movie was absolutely terrible. Because movie budgets are a little tricky to wrap your head around, and they also factor in things like marketing costs on top of it as well as adjusting for inflation, at least one source claims that the total loss for Pluto Nash tops $130 million. Number 9. Stealth lost $96 million In 2005, anyone probably would have thought a movie in which Jessica Biel and Jamie Foxx have to tango with artificially intelligent killer fighter jets would have been a good idea, right? Well, that's a big yes and a big no. The studio that financed the movie for $135 million definitely thought it was a good idea. Audiences who didn't actually go to see the movie did not. With a healthy marketing budget that was really trying to push it, when it managed to pull in $77 million at the box office, it wasn't as small a loss as the budget makes it seem. All told, it's estimated that the movie lost about $96 million. Stealth sits at 13% on Rotten Tomatoes, and Roger Ebert called it a dumbed-down Top Gun. And if you recall, no one ever claimed that Top Gun was very smart in the first place. Number 8. 47 Ronin lost $98 million The Keanu Reeves movie 47 Ronin is what is known in Japan as a Chushingura. It's a fictional account of the real-life events surrounding 47 masterless samurai known as Ronin who sought to avenge the death of their master. The story has been made into a film no less than six times, but never was the story as big and as extravagant as when Keanu starred in it back in 2013. It had a staggering $175 million budget, the highest ever for a debut director. And in a very telling sign, the movie sat on the shelf for two years after it was produced and well, that's never a good sign. 47 Ronin lost an estimated $98 million, and the blame has been put in part on Carl Rinch and his first time directing Chops. It only has 16% on Rotten Tomatoes, and many critics accused it of being both boring and cliche. Number 7. Lone Ranger lost $190 million. There are a number of movies that have been called cursed over the years. Poltergeist was one such movie, famously said to be cursed from the first installment through the third of the series. The Lone Ranger is another film which definitely deserves deserves to be considered for that honor, assuming you believe in such things. The production of The Lone Ranger was hampered by numerous problems. It suffered delays as well as massive budgetary issues. At one point, the budget had reached almost $300 million and Disney had to shut down production to retool everything. That resulted in some cuts to special effects and other parts of the budget until it was scaled back to a lean, mean $215 million. There were accidents on set with stunt people involved and a crew member even drowned during the production. Disney was fined $60,000 for safety violations and some inclement weather destroyed sets and cost even more money on the budget. When the film was finally released and the bad reviews rolled in, the result was Disney chalking the movie up to a $190 million loss. Number 6. Mars Needs Mums loss $111 million. In 2011, Mars Needs Mums seemed to be a sure thing. The legendary Robert Zemeckis, who was responsible for iconic movies like Forrest Gump and Back to the Future, produced the motion capture animation. The film itself was based on a book by writer and cartoonist Berkeley Brethet. It almost seemed worth the $150 million budget. When you factor in its marketing, it's believed that Disney probably invested about $200 million in the movie, which is why when, on its opening weekend, it only pulled in $6.9 million people started to get worried. The final gross of the film was about $39 million, which meant it lost anywhere from $111 million to $161 million, depending on the numbers that you want to work with. Rubbing salt in the wound when it was released overseas, it somehow
now made even less money, only 2.1 million throughout 14 countries. The question needs to be asked then, how did the movie that had so much talent behind it end up failing so miserably? And the problem may have been in the execution. Mars Needs Mums used motion capture technology, the kind of stuff we as audiences really took a shine to with characters like Gollum in The Lord of the Rings or the Blue Aliens from the movie Avatar. The problem was the way it was used in Mars Needs Mums was all less cool and what at least one person described as creepy. Now you might not want to watch any of the movies that we're talking about in today's video, they all kind of suck, but if there are other movies you'd like to see, well you often do that on a streaming service and sometimes those streaming services have geo restrictions and that's where today's sponsor NordVPN comes in. You can use NordVPN to change the country that you appear to be in so you can get content that might normally be available only to people in specific geographic locations. NordVPN is super fast, so watching a video is a breeze. There's no lag whatsoever. If you use VPNs before and be like, oh, why well, never loaded anything? It was really slow. That's not the case with Nord. It is ultra fast. But it's not just about that. It's also about security. If you're buying things online using an unsecure Wi Fi spot, you really should be using a VPN. And Nord does that as well. I know it's tempting not to bother, kind of just hope for the best. But those stories you read about online of people having their data stolen, it can happen. And we don't want it to happen to you. Whenever I'm browsing on public Wi Fi, just keep a VPN open in the background, just in case. You can also use it on all of your devices very easily, Android, Chrome, Windows, Linux, and on six different devices with just one account. Also, there are no logs kept because NordVPN, they're over in Panama, not in the EU or the US, so they just don't have to keep logs, which is obviously great for your privacy. Get started at nordvpn.com forward slash top tens. Use our code top tens to get 70% off a three year plan and an extra month for free. Protect yourself online today and let's get into the rest of today's video. Number five, Titan AE potentially lost $120 million on an $85 million budget. On paper, the animated film Titan AE looked bulletproof. Director John Bluth, who created classics like The Secret of NIMH, The Land Before Time, and An American Tale, was helming a sci-fi animation film featuring the voice talents of Matt Damon, Drew Barrymore, Bill Pullman, and many other well-known stars. Behind the scenes, things were getting pretty ugly during the production of the movie. For starters, Don Bluth was not the original director. The film was already $30 million into the production before the original director was fired and Bluth was hired alongside Gary Goldman. According to Goldman, the initial $30 million was used to do some pre-production art and nothing else. The movie blended traditional 2D animation with 3D animation, which didn't seem to be a conscious choice from the get-go. According to Goldman, they just abandoned the 2D idea halfway through production and finished it with 3D because that's what was new and cool at the time. The movie ended up losing somewhere between 70 and 120 million dollars on an 85 million dollar budget. It saw the head of Fox Studios fired by Rupert Murdoch and the closing of their Phoenix Animation Studio, which had produced two major bombs, including the earlier film Anastasia. Number four, Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, lost 125 million dollars, proving that there are no guarantees with animated movies, no matter how much effort goes into them, Sinbad Legend of the Seven Seas bombs like a case of Molotov cocktails. The film was produced by DreamWorks Studios and featured voice acting from Brad Pitt, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Michelle Pfeiffer. That all sounds great in theory, but the reality was, well, not great. For unknown reasons, Sinbad was turned into a Sicilian in this movie, completely ignoring the source material, which was just one of several issues. According to DreamWorks, the budget for Sinbad was $60 million. That number should be looked at with a bit of skepticism, as the former head of DreamWorks, David Geffen, said in an interview that the movie actually lost the studio $125 million. No amount of advertising budget can more than double the losses of a movie, so DreamWorks may have been playing a little fast and loose with their numbers, or their co-founder Geffen just had no idea what he was talking about. The movie had extensive marketing tie-ins with Baskin Robbins, Hasbro, M&Ms, and more. When it debuted, it didn't even outgross Finding Nemo, which had already been in theaters for six weeks. Number three, Carthroat Island lost $147 million. It's not often that a movie does so poorly it kills an entire genre of film, but that's what Cutthroat Island seemed to do. The Rennie Harlan-directed movie, starring Gina Davis in a swashbuckling adventure, did so poorly Hollywood didn't make another pirate movie for over a decade. It can't be overstated just 
how awful this movie's whole legacy is. The budget for Cutthroat Island was $115 million back in 1995. Its box office take was $10 million. This was so bad, it actually made it into the Guinness Book of World Records as the greatest financial loss in film history at the time. When adjusted for inflation today, you're looking at a loss of $147 million. The IMDb facts page for the movie reads like a rogues gallery of bad ideas and terrible mistakes. One actor was fired for getting drunk and mooning Gina Davis. Star Matthew Modine explains that some of the budget went for the shipping of dozens and dozens of cases of V8 for the director to drink on set. They had to be shipped from the United States to Malta, and apparently an entire room of the vegetable juice was just left at the end of filming. On top of that, three cameras were used to film every single shot, which resulted in massive amounts of unused film at the end of the production. Harlan is said to have fired the camera chief operator from the set, which resulted in dozens of other crew members quitting in solidarity. The blame can't solely be put on Harlan's shoulders, though, as he tried to quit production, realizing just how bad the movie was going to be, as did Gina Davis. Still, the studio refused to stop production. Number 2. Gemini Man Lost $111 Million Betting on Will Smith is usually a smart choice when it comes to Hollywood. Many of his earlier films were massive blockbusters like Independence Day and Men in Black. Everyone had a miss once in a while, though, and Smith definitely missed the mark with his 2019 sci-fi flick, Gemini Man. Estimates place Gemini Man's losses at around $111 million. A number of factors seem to have come together to make the movie fail so badly. For starters, it was filmed at 120 frames per second for a 3D release. High frame rate movies like that have a curious effect on audiences. While it seems like higher frame rates and crisper detail should make a movie more exciting and interesting for viewers, what happens is the movie becomes so real and clean looking, it removes some of the magic and glamour that we expect from movies. While it's hard to define, the result is that audiences just don't like the way it looks. The other problem with the movie was that the storyline was pretty generic and not interesting. It wasn't necessarily a bad movie, but being so run-of-the-mill and then having so many reviews dominated by the technological aspects of the high frame rate meant that no one was really trying that hard to sell the movie. Number 1. Terminator Dark Fate Lost $120 Million The Terminator franchise is one of the most unusual in film history. The first one made Arnold Schwarzenegger a star, proved James Cameron as a blockbuster film, filmmaker and started the ball rolling on one of cinema's most famous characters. Ten years later, when we got Terminator 2, it became one of those rare times when a sequel surpassed the original, and then things took a turn. Rise of the Machines, Salvation, and Genesis were all fairly underwhelming at the box office and for critics. But then James Cameron returned to the franchise with Dark Fate and brought the series star Linda Hamilton back as well. It felt like a recipe to take us right back to the legendary status of T2 Judgment Day, or at least that's what it seemed like at first. Dark Fate opened $29 million at the domestic box office. Respectable numbers for a low-budget film, but not for something of this caliber. The budget for Dark Fate was estimated at somewhere around $185 million. In order to break even, the movie needed to make about $450 million. This put the movie on track to lose a staggering $120 million overall. Despite having the original director and cast back, and even being critically praised for being the best film in the franchise since Terminator 2, it seems that audience had just had enough of Terminator after so many bad movies in a row. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And as always, thank you for watching.